A carburetor is one of the most refined components of a dirt bike. Years and years of development in the racing world have made this component a complete work of art. But how exactly do they work? And how different is a flat CR carb from a mechanical slide carb? Stay tuned to find out. A carburetor has a simple job, to add fuel to the air that goes into the engine. The air-fuel mixture is burnt in the combustion chamber and the rapid expansion of the extremely hot gases is what provides the drive of the engine. However, there's a magical number for an engine to work the most efficiently possible. An air-fuel ratio of 14.7 to 1. But what does that mean? For every 1 gram of fuel, there has to be 14.7 grams of air, since air is not just made of oxygen. Any air-fuel ratio under 14.7 is considered a rich mixture and anything more than 14.7 is considered a lean mixture. However, in dirt bikes, the ideal air-fuel ratio is closer to 12 to 1, since dirt bikes are performance-oriented machines rather than the epitome of efficiency. But how exactly does a carburetor mix air and fuel? Let's first take a look at the simple mechanical slide carb. A carburetor with a mechanical slide is found on two-stroke dirt bikes, and the way it works couldn't be simpler. As the name implies, you have a mechanical slide crossing the main air passage, which is attached to the throttle cable. How much you twist the throttle determines how much the slide is blocking the airflow in the main air passage. The section right under the slide is called the throat. Under the main air passage, there's a float pole, which is connected to the fuel tank. This float bowl is responsible for keeping available at all times a steady level of fuel under the throat in order to prevent irregular throttle response. The float is a simple buoy with a needle that blocks the fuel tank's feeding port when there's enough fuel in the float bowl. From the float bowl, the fuel can be sucked into the main air passage through three different feeding circuits. The choke circuit, the idle circuit and the main circuit. Let's see how all these circuits work together. To richen the mixture on startup, we pull the choke, which provides additional fuel to make it easier for the engine to start when it's cold. Once the engine starts, the choke closes and the idle circuit kicks in. The circuit provides a small but steady amount of fuel whenever the engine is running on idle and a little over idle through the pilot jet. When you twist more than around 1 8 of throttle, the main circuit steps in which provides the main amount of fuel according to the throttle response through the main jet. The principle is simple. When the slide lifts, the engine sucks air through the throat. Since the air is flowing from a larger cross-section to a smaller cross-section, the air has to accelerate, which in turn reduces the pressure where the cross-section is the smallest. This low pressure point is placed right on top of the main jet, which creates a vacuum and sucks fuel through the circuit. To provide some adjustability, there's the adjustment screw in the idle circuit. You can either find an air adjustment screw or a fuel adjustment screw. Both make the idle mixture leaner or richer depending on the running conditions, but are adjusted in reverse. Quite simple, right? Besides the mechanical slide carb, there's also the flat CR carburetor usually found in four-stroke dirt bikes. This carb isn't as simple as the mechanical slide one, but it was a game changer for the development of four-stroke dirt bikes. The flat CR carburetor also has a float bowl, an idle and main jet, adjustment screw and a slide. However, this slide has four small wheels and a vacuum release plate. So, what is the purpose of making the slide so complex? As opposed to two-stroke engines, four-stroke engines create much bigger intake vacuum pulses. If a mechanical slide is used on a four-stroke engine, the slide would get pushed so hard against the carburetor that it would get stuck and wouldn't move freely. However, by having a slide with a fixed gap between the carb and the slide, there would be an unwanted air bypass between these two components and there wouldn't be any way to get around it. This is where the vacuum release plate gets the job done. When the plate is in its place, there is only a minor play between the slide and the carb mostly thanks to the rubber seal on the inside that acts like an air valve. Near the bottom of the plate, there's a hole. This plate works as a buffer to regulate the resisting force between the slide and the carb during the vertical movement. 
During air intakes, the plate is pulled against the carb and sucks all the air from the space between the plate and the slide through the hole. As this happens, the rubber seal doesn't let any air in from the sides, creating a vacuum as strong as the vacuum created by the intake, pulling the vacuum release plate to the slide. This counterbalances the contact forces and allows a smoother travel of the slide while accelerating and decelerating. Incredibly simple, right? Even with this clever system, the suction created is so strong that other systems had to be developed to further improve throttle response. The double cable throttle system on four strokes is an extra way to help the slide move more easily on a carb. While one cable is pulling, the other is pushing. However, these features only address the mechanical part of the problem of having a carb in four stroke dirt bikes. On sudden and quick accelerations, there can be a lag from the moment you open the throttle to the moment the fuel is being sucked by the engine. The mixture will momentarily become too lean and can make the engine stall in typical four-stroke fashion. This is where the flat CR carb brings another trick to the table, the accelerator pump. The accelerator pump is basically a rod with a diaphragm and a spring at the end, filled with fuel. It is connected to two canals, a longer but less restricted canal, which is connected to a small brass nozzle on the main air passage, and another shorter and more restricted canal connected to the float bowl. On normal accelerations, the fuel pushed by the diaphragm will easily flow to the float bowl without reaching the brass nozzle. However, on really quick accelerations, the shorter canal will be too restricted to let all the fuel reach the float bowl and will be forced to go up the longer and less restricted canal. This will squirt additional fuel into the inlet manifold, preventing the air-fuel ratio from becoming too lean. This mechanism eliminates the so-called bogging, making it more suited for racing applications. A carburetor is a very simple and well-engineered component, and even with fuel injection becoming a standard, Sometimes you simply can't beat the simplicity, performance and easy tunability of a carb. Tuning and fiddling with the jetting of your carburetor is often seen as a complete headache, but it doesn't have to be. Stay tuned to find out why. Although carburetors are one of the most well-designed and engineered components of a dirt bike, most people don't really know how to jet a carb to their needs. First things first, Let's understand the different components of a carb. From the air filter to the inlet manifold, there's the main air passage. The slide crosses the main air passage and the reduced cross section created by the slide is called the throat. This variation is responsible for accelerating the airflow going to the engine while also creating a low pressure point on the throat and thus sucking fuel into the airflow. Between the slide and the inlet manifold, there's the idle circuit, which is responsible for feeding the engine during idle and up to 1 8 of throttle through the pilot jet. On the idle circuit, there's also an adjustment screw, which allows some tunability of the air-fuel ratio of the idle mixture. Now for the really interesting part. On the slide, there's the jet needle. This needle has a tapered shape and fits into the needle jet which is mounted directly under the slide and connects to the float pole. When the slide is fully down, the jet needle blocks completely the fuel flow from the float bowl to the main air passage. Screwed onto the bottom of the needle jet, there's the main jet, which is accessible through the float bowl. Now let's understand how each of these circuits affect the throttle response. There are three tunable jetting systems on a carb. The idle jet, the needle and needle jet, and the main jet. From a fully closed throttle position, the idle jet is what keeps the engine running up to around 1 8 of throttle. If we continue to open the throttle, the idle circuit starts fading out. While the slide lifts, the area between the needle and the jet needle increases, allowing more fuel to be sucked through the main jet to the main air passage. This circuit is responsible for the mid-throttle response. When the slide is high enough so that the needle is no longer blocking the needle jet, the main jet becomes the limiting system for fuel flow. 
This jet is responsible for the end of throttle response and full throttle. Now comes the fun part of jetting your car to your liking. It's a lot easier than you might think. Let's say your bike is running too lean on idle or that it's stalling easily at little over idle and you have set the air adjustment screw already too much in. Changing to a bigger idle jet will do the trick. If the opposite happens, you can change to a smaller idle jet, leaning the mixture out. Now let's take a look at the mid-throttle response. If you feel the bike bogging too much, it's because the mixture is too rich and you have to lean it up. To do that, take the needle and place the circlip a groove higher. This will position the needle lower on a needle jet and it will obstruct the fuel flow for longer, leaning out the mixture. You can look at it as delaying the fuel flow from the needle and the needle jet. When the opposite happens and the mixture is too lean, place the circlip a groove lower to make the mixture richer sooner on the mid-throttle response. This can be useful if you want more power on mid-throttle applications. But let's say that every time you place the circlip on a lower groove, the engine performs better but the needle has no more grooves left. This is where you change the needle jet. If the engine requires more fuel on mid-throttle and on full throttle it runs just fine, just install a bigger needle jet. Don't forget to reset the needle circlip in the middle position and repeat the process until you have the engine running butter smooth on mid-throttle. And what about full throttle? If you need a leaner mixture on full throttle to avoid foul plugs, change to a smaller main jet. If you need a richer mixture to have a cooler engine at full throttle, for example, change to a bigger main jet. Most of us won't be tuning a carb from scratch. We'll be doing some fine tuning to an extensively tested carb. This means that the base setting will be a good starting point. However, the most curious home tuners should have a question in mind. How can I change a specific area on the mid-throttle response without changing the whole thing? The answer is the needle. What if you just want to make it richer on the higher part of the mid-throttle response? Just install a needle with a thinner tip. On that throttle range, the needle will allow more fuel through the needle jet, making the mixture richer. Changing the tapered shape of the needle will have a huge impact on the mid-throttle fuel flow. Different shaped needles will provide different engine responses and it all comes down to how you want the mixture to be for a specific application.